Hey everybody, this is Scott doing a second video on the 1961 Snowbird Model S22 or uh, Model S224. Uh, making this video for the guys on the Yahoo Group's Snowbird Forum and for Dan who just bought a S224 himself, same model as mine. We're going to compare features and see uh, if we can figure stuff out. I loosened up everything here on the cover, uh, the carb cover. This little adjustable air thing comes off. Sit those in there. This screw goes all the way down through the carb intake to hold this on. Let's see what we have. Dan, it looks like you're missing this guy. This is some kind of uh, air intake tube and then this guy sits on top this is kind of a plasticky rubbery type material it's not metal um you it looks like from your pictures you don't have either of those but you probably don't need them uh this is just the air intake for the carb bowl it would probably run without those i would imagine and this is the choke control lever, and yours is broken. And oddly, this is like plastic as well. This is kind of a soft, rubbery plastic material. Um, I really don't know if that's original or not. I'm surprised that it wouldn't be metal. But uh, if it is original, it's kind of a weird plastic. And it doesn't seem that hard. It actually bends a bit. But you turn it on choke on. I don't know if I can, eh, I can't really see in there. But um, it puts the choke on. So you put the choke on to start and start it. Once the engine's running, you take the choke back off for running. And that's reachable from under the cover. The screw, this long screw, goes down through here and it actually screws in down there. So, I believe mine is complete. I don't think I have anything missing. Um, I don't know that for a fact. I haven't run this machine yet. Just bought it a few months ago. But as far as I know, it's complete. Looks to be. I don't see anything obvious missing. Uh, most snowblowers don't have air filters at all. So you wouldn't have an air filter. It would be normal to not have one. So this sits on there. I won't. I don't need to put all that back together right now, but this goes back on. Kind of hard doing this one-handed. And then this screw, that goes in and goes down through here, but you can figure it out. I don't quite understand the need for the little uh, air intake here. Seems like it would get enough air without that, but I guess Snowbird made an adjustable air intake for the carb. Not really sure why you would want that or need that. But now let's look at the back. I just took the back off for the first time. So, and look what's in here yuck, mouse nest. A couple of them. Probably been in there for several years. The guy I bought this from earlier this year said the machine last ran. Ugh, I hate looking in mice nests because you never know if you're going to find any old mouse corpses in there. That's kind of gross. But Anyway, the guy I bought this from, he said it ran when he parked it three years ago. And he obviously parked it outside. He didn't say that he did, but it looks like it. he did. Storing a snowblower or a lawnmower or a garden tractor Outside is a sure way to destroy it really fast. It rusted up. These bolts um, held the belt cover on and they were very tight. I uh, sprayed some lithium grease to try to loosen them up and one actually broke. This one was so tight that the end broke off. I put an adjustable wrench on it and tried to turn it and this one was so tight that it broke off. So then I had to really chew it up with uh, some big pliers. So I'm going to have to get a replacement screw for that. 
And that's another side effect of storing a machine out in the elements for several years. Really ruins things. But anyway, the belt location. Dan, yours I think was on the other side of this, if I remember from the photo. Um, this belt, for some reason, was over here. And I think that's wrong. I don't know why it would be over there. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of tensioner. Like I said, I haven't run this machine yet, so I'm not exactly sure how everything works. But you've got two belts. Um, this one comes off the engine, uh, goes down to the big drive wheel. And then you've got a second belt. Um, one must be for the wheels and one, one for the auger. You know, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't looked at this machine in enough detail yet to really know what's going on. But as far as I know, um, this belt configuration is correct from when it last ran. I doubt anyone had this belt cover off since the last time it ran, so that is probably the way the, oops, the, way the belts are supposed to be. So hopefully that is helpful. If there's anything else you want to see to compare, just let me know. I'll be happy to take more photos or videos. So, I'm going to put this back together with the one good bolt, and I'm going to keep it in the shed for now. And there is Mr. Calvin. So, that is a look at the belts and the carb. So, I hope that is useful. And like I said, if there's anything else you want to see, let me know. Thanks.